Hello, my name is Ken, and I want to welcome you back to Deep Waters. This podcast is brought to you by Applied Strengths Ministry, where we believe working together in our strengths is the effect of working out the will and calling of God in our lives. The title of this message is Thinning the Herd. This is a multi-episode series in which this is episode 5 of 8. Look at what his sacrifice has set in motion. Daniel 7, 9, 10. I watched till thrones were put in place, and the Ancient of Days was seated. His garment was white as snow and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame, its wheels a burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. A thousand thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were open. Daniel 7, 13, 14. I was watching in the night visions and behold, one like the son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven, He came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given a dominion and glory and a kingdom, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom is one which shall not be destroyed. Daniel 7, 18 But the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom, and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. So you want a tiny house, do you? Do you see what's coming? If I were a dragon, I would shout so loud that I would send a flame to the sun. To think of all the things we go through on this planet. And now get why Paul shared with us this profound revelation. Roman 8, 18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. I split this one from that one to draw you into a picture. I want you to see that he sees you. Paul is one example of a Christian walking on battlefield earth. Bad things happen to everyone. Is it not written that time and chance happens to everyone? Ecclesiastes 9.11 Did not Solomon go through a vanity fit in a season of quandarious frustrations? Ecclesiastes So look at Paul's spiritual resume. It doesn't have to be yours, but you can write in your story and hope that it allows you to end up in agreeing with Paul and what he states in Philippians 3, 7, 11. Your life events should lead you to a conclusion similar. Otherwise, how could you celebrate the events spoken of in Daniel 7, 9, 18, in this entire message? 2 Corinthians 11, 20, 31. For you put up with it if one brings you into bondage, if one devours you, if one takes from you, if one exalts himself, if one strikes you on the face. To our shame, I say that we were too weak for that. But in whatever anyone is bold, I speak foolishly. I am bold also. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors, more abundant. In stripes, above measure. In prisons, more frequently. In deaths, often. From the Jews, five times I received forty stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked, a night and a day. I had been in the deep. I journeyed often in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren in weariness and toil, in sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst and fastings often, in cold and nakedness, besides the other things which comes upon me daily, my deep concern for all the churches. Who is weak and I am not weak? Who is made to stumble and I do not burn with indignation? If I must boast, I will boast in the things which concern my infirmity. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is blessed forever, know that I am not lying. So we see the perfect cause and effect scenario between these two scriptures. It is a great model for us to follow. But if you are inclined to be entertained by the things of God rather than to be changed, then you will fall short of what you were called to be in him. Philippians 3, 7, 11. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted lost for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, 
the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. So we have changed the tire several times, but will now return to the ones we started with on this journey. Matthew 16, 1 and 4. Then the Pharisees and the Sadducees came, and testing him, asked that he would show them a sign from heaven. A wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign shall be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. And he left them and departed. We must get this or we fall into the same error. They do not right here to find those who seek after miracles, signs, and wonders above or in place of having a relationship with him as a wicked and adulterous generation? I don't think you want your name written in the wicked and adulterous generational book. Jesus himself was a miracle, sign, and a wonder sent from heaven. He was what they were looking for the whole time. They just couldn't figure that out like so many today. He is all you need to completely turn your life around. He lived his life healing people of ailments and diseases that those who had the title of doctor could not. He taught without carrying a teaching credential, educated people through his authority with no PhD earned. Titles, titles, titles. Then we do, then we take action. He just did and did it better than anyone ever could, titles and all. I went to school lots and found all of the hubbub that if I had just figured out that I should just be a life learner and avoid ever gaining the title know-it-all, then I should have now, 22 years later, not been strapped to a school loan. I'm not knocking education, but surely the institution of education and its effectiveness. Now, if the institution of education was of the mind and heart that they wanted to ensure America had the highest quality of educated people who would use that education to better everyone's lives and not just grow a fat head or wallet, then maybe it would go about its business differently. Now I sound like a child I know, but it's just so frustrating that much of what I have learned in school wasn't even practiced in my industry. It still isn't today. It's so hard not to feel ripped off. It kind of feels like I paid for the thief to break into my own house. Silly, but so sliding out from under my soapbox who walk away. Mark 8, 11, 12. Then the Pharisees came out and began to dispute with him, seeking from him a sign from heaven, testing him. But he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, Why does this generation seek a sign? Surely I say to you, no sign shall be given to this generation. The very thing they wanted to see wasn't going to happen because their love for the spectacular, for the miracles, signs, and wonders, was greater than for the one in whom existed all of the splendors of heaven and earth. There is nothing wrong with miracles, signs, and wonders, as they actually should be a very active part of your ministry. But if Jesus and a relationship with God is not more important than these miracle signs and wonders, this can trip you up big time. Matthew 7, 21, 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me you who practice lawlessness. So there you are praying for someone and behold, Pazan, they get healed. They go about shouting that they are healed to all who remain mystified at what just happened. Now in the Jesus world, we would teach and preach the kingdom of God simultaneously. But a person who is just looking to do the tricks will be absent of the relationship with God that they will need for the sustenance and sustainability in ministry. I always think that when I read this scripture, that if we were out of order in our relationship with God, I would wish that he took away our ability to perform the magic we so love. At least so it seems in my mind that we may at least snap up and wonder what happened. It's probably very difficult to pray for people and see all of them walk away still in the same condition as before they met you. But in this case, these people went forward in the operation of the gifts without considerations to the giver of the gifts. Imagine, and maybe I'm just a little off here, but imagine standing in line and you hear Jesus quote the scripture to the guy in front of you. Oh boy, I might be tempted to go to the end of the line. To build up an entire ministry on the supernatural outworking of God, but not enter into knowing God, into the knowing relationship with God, is absolutely ludicrous. So the beauty of knowing this now is to change the outcome, change our order, 
First things first in the kingdom of God results in a relationship so powerful with God that you can turn the world upside down and inside out. And you can unbind with your shoelaces. You can watch water stand on top of itself and all without losing your appetite to know the source of all life. Well, that's it for today. Remember, it's not what you find wrong or disagree with regarding these messages, but what you can take away from it. Together, we can do more to impact the kingdom than if we worked alone. Let's flip the script and kill, steal, and destroy the works of the enemy and create space for the light of light to shine through in people's lives. Plant a seed and click on the like and subscribe button. Let's build this ministry together. Thanks to see you next time in deep waters.